So you're not managing a property in a mm -hmm. rent home, but you're managing people. Mm -hmm. So it's not as hands-off as people think. Although I'm not managing tenants and toilets per se, I'm managing a relationship with yep. the future buyers of my property. And why am I managing that relationship? Because I want to get paid on time. Mm -hmm. And I want to know that the exit that we have planned is going to happen at the date and the price point that we had intended. What is up you guys, Matt McKeever here with Rachel, one of the mothers of real estate again. And so we're actually going to dive down into Rachel's investment strategy, so rent to owns. So rent to owns actually, I'm really interested in talking to you about them because it seems to be one of those unicorn strategies that lots of people hear about. And I know you mentioned it in another video and I'd love to hear your perspective. People seem to really love or hate the idea of rent to owns. People that are doing rent owns, it seems like they've done one, it didn't work out and they hated it, or that's all they do these days. And so, do you mind maybe shining some light on rent to owns? Why, why is there such a polarizing experience when it comes to rent to own? investing? That's a great question, Matt. I think uh, the polarizing experience comes from the fact that people have mismanaged expectations of what rent -own is and what rent -own isn't. When I got started, that was very clear. Everyone had very different experiences and most mm -hmm. roads led to um, a rent -own not completing as planned. And of course, every, everyone's definition of as planned is different. But from my perspective, I'm an investor. So everyone that I had talked to said that their rent -to own didn't complete as planned, but they still made out very profitably so they wanted okay. to keep on doing it because as an investor if you fail um, to help your tenant buyer get to the end and actually qualify for financing and exit favorably as the investor you actually make more money mm -hmm. and that's the allure of it however that wasn't the model that I really wanted to gravitate to I really like the essence of rent to own because it allowed me to help another family overcome some of their setbacks and get into home ownership that's really what appealed to me and the bonus was was that I don't have tenants and toilets to deal with, I have yeah. above average cash flow, and I have sustainable, repeatable uh, profitability. Because for me, it was really important to use real estate to replace my corporate job income and my husband's corporate job income. And those were hefty paychecks. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do it knowing that, oh, you know, my appliances might break down this month. Oh, uh, in a few years from now, I'm going to have to, you know, fork out 15 grand to fix the roof. Oh, I'm going to have a vacancy for three months. All of that created so much volatility. So I was really attracted to the rent to own model. And everyone that I talked to kind of said, yeah, it's a 50 50 chance of you yeah. actually succeeding. And I kind of thought, oh, it doesn't have to be that way. There must be a different way of making it work. And that's kind of where we zoned in on what wasn't working and we found the gaps and we started to fill those gaps to make the strategy sustainable for us as investors to get that repeatable paycheck, if you will. But at the same point, that actually comes from helping a home buyer successfully go through the rent to own process. So when we're talking about rent to own, maybe we should just kind of break down exactly what that means. So what do you mean rent to own? Ah, yes. So rent to own 101. Um, a home buyer can't qualify for a mortgage. Today's mortgage guidelines are quite strict and they're mm -hmm. going to continue to get stricter. But you know, life happens. People have credit challenges. They might be saving 5%, but that's not enough if you have blemishes on your credit. Yeah. And they're motivated to get into home ownership. They have home ownership mentality. They're tired of renting and they're ready to make that move. But they just can't get there the conventional way. They might not have the money for a private mortgage. They might not be able to come up with a big enough down payment for a B lender scenario so rent to own presents a great opportunity for them in comes the private investor yeah. the private investor has 20 percent down the private investor has great credit the private investor doesn't want tenants and toilets yeah. and the private investor wants a strategy that is not kind of the long-term build your wealth strategy but more of a get in and out quickly because the average rent to own is about three years long so when you have kind of that type of an investor and you have a home buyer that needs help you marry them Mm -hmm. and a rent-to-own arrangement is made. Now, a fundamental component of rent-to-owns is understanding whether you're approaching it from property first or from the people first mm -hmm. angle. And you've heard that, right? Some people buy a property below market value, they add some lipstick, push the appreciation value, mm -hmm. and instead of bringing in tenants that'll rent it out for however long, they want people that are going to rent to own it and treat it as their own, take care of maintenance, mm -hmm. take care of repairs, and give that investor peace of mind high risk um, based on my experience based on my research and we've done you know 
we're getting close to 300 of these rent-to-owns. Oh, wow. That's what my husband and I have done over the course of our kind of rent-to-own career. You know, it's taken 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, there, it's not a factory, but it's a, a model that we're just constantly improving on and constantly evolving. And in those 10 years of doing these rent-to-own deals, we identified the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Property-first rent-to-owns tend to be riskier. People first rent owns different ball game. When you work with a home buyer, figure out their budget, figure out their needs, what is it really going to take for them to succeed in that rent to own process? Then you help them find a property. You got to know your market, market yeah. fundamentals. This is where that training comes in. You need to know what a great property is because. As an investor, you're holding title to that property, mm -hmm. and if that tenant buyer can't pay on time or defaults on that rent-to-owner agreement, you got to know how to execute on the various exit strategies. Um, and then, the chances of, of rent-to-own where people first versus property first, the chances of people first rent-to-own going sideways are much lower. In fact, we have a 90% success rate. So nine out of 10 people that we work with in our rent-to-owns complete the process successfully. Um, we have the repeatable cash flow and they exit into their own mortgage at the end. We wash our hands clean, pull out the profits and move on to the next rent-to-own and it's rinse and repeat. So essentially with rent-to-own, once you've facilitated the initial deal, it's much more hands-off than a traditional investment property that's buy and hold? That's misconception number one. <laughs> yes and no. In order to get that home buyer to do what they need to do in the rent to own process um, and become mortgage ready and pay on time and, and, and improve their credit and settle some of their you know, collection items that has caused their credit blemishes in the first place, there's a little bit of work required. So you're not managing a property in a rent home, but you're managing people. So it's not as hands-off as people think. That is the, the biggest misconception that we thought. We thought, okay, well, set it and forget it mentality. And although I'm not managing tenants and toilets per se, I'm managing a relationship with the future buyers of my property. And why am I managing that relationship? Because I want to get paid on time. And I want to know that the exit that we have planned is going to happen at the date and the price point that we had intended. So for me, a big chunk of what the success factor um, of rent to owns represents is maintaining that relationship, ongoing dialogue and communication with the home buyers all the way through that three year rent to own term. And that's what we've really gotten good at and I like to call it the secret sauce of our success. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so let's, you maybe just hinted at it, but let's touch upon um, the Mothers of Real Estate course. So do you mind maybe just extrapolating on that a little bit further for people? You guys have started focusing on really diving into building the foundation, the fundamentals of information. So will they actually be learning about rent to own or is it more about just learning how to become an initial investor? That's a great question. So to do anything in real estate, you have to know how to uh, move forward from a foundational point of view. So picking the right property, picking the right market, putting the contracts together, running the numbers, all of that stuff is fundamentals. And rent to own is an advanced strategy that allows you to apply the fundamentals. So if I didn't know how to analyze um, a spreadsheet, if I didn't know how to run the numbers and how to consider various exit strategies, I wouldn't be as successful as I am with it today. And I'm able to focus and refine as I go forward, but it's always anchored in the fundamentals. Awesome. Um, so if people want to find out more about Mothers of Real Estate, uh, you can jump into the video description down below. I'll have a link both to Mothers of Real Estate as well as their specific course. I highly recommend you guys check it out. I was given a demo and essentially just, I really enjoyed the different templates and Excel documents they gave. I think that for a lot of us investors, it's really easy to gather that initial high level information, but then when it comes to actually doing the tactics and actually executing on the deals, that's where things like workshops and documents can really help us sink our teeth into understanding the fundamentals so that we can go out and execute. Um, thanks again so much, Rachel, for uh, joining me. And so if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And until next time, remember, Making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks, guys.